Well, welcome back, everybody, to the Raiders roster report. So it's uh, April the 2nd, and uh, things are starting to slow down a little bit in free agency for the Raiders. Uh, all eyes are starting to get focused on the draft with all the pro days. Uh, pro days are about to uh, to wrap up, so uh, teams are starting to evaluate the, uh, the draft prospects. Um, I do expect the Raiders to make uh, some moves. They, uh, they still have a lot of holes, especially on defense. And uh, we'll uh, hopefully they get uh, they get some more free agent signings uh, before the draft. Uh, but if not, I'm sure they'll address many of the issues in the draft and then post draft free agency as well. Uh, kind of capture what they don't get in the draft to fill the holes in. So uh, what I wanted to do tonight was just kind of go over uh, the draft possibilities for the first round. Um, and really, I saw uh, an article out, uh, I think it was today or yesterday, uh, somebody had a, a trade down scenario in the first round, which I think makes a lot of sense for the Raiders. We need uh, still an awful lot of talent, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I think, uh, I think we all would agree that, uh, you know, right tackle, uh, edge rusher, uh, safety, are really the primary concerns um, and probably defensive tackle as well. Basically anything on the defensive side that would get us after the quarterback um, more frequently would definitely be a need for the Raiders, but uh, you know, free safety or, or strong safety. And we'll get into that in a second, but uh, definitely a safety position uh, would be necessary. Uh, and of course our right tackle position. So I think that's pretty obvious of what we, uh, what we need uh, to complete the roster. Obviously there's plenty of other spots as far as depth goes, but uh, if we're picking in the first round, we definitely want to pick somebody that's going to be starting and playing on the playing as many snaps as possible. Uh, that's the whole idea of uh, picking the first round. So I'm definitely up for the trade down scenario. I also saw an article that, uh, that has trading up as well back into the first round. So, we, in the perfect world, we'd do both, right? Trade trade down, maybe with New Orleans, pick up their 60th pick and their 28th for our 17, make our draft pick, and then uh, trade back up in the first round at the 30, 31, 32 pick, something like that. Um, that would give us two first rounders, a second and a third, most likely. Uh, but that's probably, probably never going to happen. That would be the ideal scenario for the Raiders. But uh, let's focus on what we got tonight. Uh, and what we have going into the draft. Uh, like I said, we have definitely some needs at safety at uh, any pass rushing position, whether it be up the middle or on the edge, and, of course, our, our free safety position. So uh, I just wanted to get into it a little bit, uh, and here we go. So the first – I've got five uh, players that I think would be um, the most obvious, the most uh, probably uh, – best players for the Raiders to pick if we were to stay at uh, 17 or, or sort of anywhere in the first round if we did trade down. Uh, but these would be the, the best players to not only uh, feel the need, but definitely very good players in their own right. And guys that we really need to get on this team to make our defense better and, of course, our, our tackle position on the offensive side even better. So the first pick that we'll take a look at is uh, Jeremiah Ousa koromora if I, hopefully I said his name right. Um, so this, this pick here would be, um, definitely, uh, a tremendous player, uh, but he's a strong safety. I'm, um, I'm hearing all these, uh, pundits and experts coming on saying he's going to be a, a wheel linebacker and this and that. Uh, he's not, he is definitely a strong safety. Somebody that you're going to play, um, uh, in our system, sort of on the outside shoulder of the Leo, um, allowing him to take slot receivers, handle the running game, uh, blitz from different angles, uh, and really just play outside of the, of the hash marks. Um, tremendous player. He's uh, 6'1". He, he weighed in at 221 at the combine with 33-inch arms. He didn't run the 40, which is a little curious for me because he, he added the extra weight. But all the other measurables were great, 36.5 vertical, 415, 20-shuttle, uh, 681 three cone drill he didn't bench his wings wingspan was 78 his broad jump 10 4 so he checks all the boxes i mean if you go and look at like uh comparable i don't know if you look at like jamal adams 510 214 33 inch arms uh cam uh cam chancellor 63 231 33 inch arms uh both of those guys either ran a 462 or 456 uh vertical uh 
he's got him by about four inches. Um, so uh, the, the 20 shuttle is 415. Uh, Jamal Adams is 413. So he's right there with Jamal. And these are the best like box safeties, if you will, uh, in the game. Derwin James is about the same, 6'2", 216. He ran a 447. He had a 40-inch vertical. Uh, Jeremiah, the 36 and a half inch vertical. So all the, all the comps are there. Um, everything is there for this guy. The problem is, um, and I don't know if it's a problem, but really, if you look at it, if we picked him, uh, Jonathan Abram either becomes the backup strong safety or box safety, however you want to call it, or he moves to free safety. And physically, uh, his attributes best serve as a free safety. So, if the Raiders make a decision to move him, uh, Jonathan Abram, to free safety, Jeremiah Uso-Mokoromora would be the perfect pick at 17 uh, as our box safety. Um, tremendous pick. His, his draft, if you look at all the mock drafts and um, consensus drafts, uh, he goes anywhere from 11 to 24 with the latest consensus out at 17, which is our pick. So, it's not an overdraft to pick him. Definitely at 17. But we definitely have to figure out Jonathan Abram. Now, Jonathan Abram says he's uh, getting stronger with all the articles, stronger, bigger. If he is, that means he's attempting to play the box safety. And then we would have no reason to draft Coromora. He's not going to play Will Linebacker. His tape at Notre Dame is not good when he's playing in the ha on the hash mark or inside the hash mark, which is what he'd be doing as a Will Linebacker. That's not going to happen. He's not big enough to play Sam. He's not going to be able to be a, a traditional edge rusher like our Sam line Linebacker would do. Uh, of course, he can cover, yes, but uh, our Sam Linebacker is a little different. He's actually an edge rusher as well. And he's not going to go up against tackles uh, down in and down out. It's not going to happen for him. Um, so the strong safety, box safety is a spot he'd be on our team. Be tremendous at it. Um, and we just need to get Jonathan Abram to play free safety now. I think there would be a lot of criticism that people say Jonathan Abram cannot cover. Well, that may be true. And free safety would actually be a better position for him because you pay, play in the deep deep middle of the field, help on the sidelines, lay the big hit when somebody comes over the middle, everything's in front of you. You're not really in a man-to-man -man coverage situation with our, our single high free safety. So, And, you know, his comps comp out at, you know, Earl Thomas, Justin Simmons, both weighing in around 205. They have about the same 40 times, the same – Measurables, vertical, everything else is the same of the of the top tier free safeties. Uh, Jonathan Abram fits that profile perfectly. So, if the Raiders make the decision to put Jonathan Abram back at the free safety position and do the things that I just mentioned, then Cormora is going to be our pick at seventeen. If not, if Jonathan Abrams is going to be our box safety or strong safety, we will not be drafting Cormora. So, that's kind of the gist on him. I think it'd be a great player if we could pull it off. We don't have a free safety at the moment, uh, assuming uh, Jonathan Abrams is our box safety. So putting him back there would be tremendous. Uh, it would be ideal if we could get Malik Hooker or Trey Boston, and then get Jonathan Abrams back there and learn from him, learn from learn from one of those two guys. Get Cormora at our strong safety position. Our our defense would definitely take a leap forward uh, for the season. So moving on, so let's say that uh, let's say that the Raiders decide uh, Jonathan Abram is our box of strong safety. Then we're going to need a free safety, and so the next logical pick would be Trayvon Mooring out of TCU. Definitely, uh, no no doubt about it. He is the best safety in the class. Um, I don't think there's any dispute on that. However. He played a lot of split safety, and we play a single high safety. And and I think that any safety in this class is going to be challenged um, to play our free safety position because there's so much that's going to be demanded of them. To put a rookie back there is going to be very difficult. I still think we should get one of the um, one of the veteran free safeties that's out there. Anybody we bring in, we're going to have to get them up to speed, and a veteran to help them out would be great. Now, if the Raiders think Trayvon is, is the guy and he's ready to hit the ground running from day one, then this is going to be the pick. Um, his draft stock usually is anywhere from what I've seen, 17 to 30. 
Uh, the consensus kind of has them around 25. So, you know, I don't think it's an overreach because uh, the next best is going to go in the second round with um, Richie Grant as a single high safety or Javon Hall or one of the two. Um, we'll get into that in a different different class, category. But, you know, Trayvon's measurable. He's six foot 202. He ran a 4 5 40. His vertical is 33. Uh, his uh, shuttle was 419. His 10 split was one one point five. Um, his numbers were actually a little down than was anticipated. Uh, he had a back injury uh, during his pro day, so it kind of it was he was only going about eighty uh, percent. But if you look at the other measurables, uh, Earl Thomas is a four four three forty. Justin Simmons is a four six one forty, but he had a forty inch for, uh, vertical, a three eighty five uh, twenty yard shuttle, and a six five eight three cone drill. So definitely a dynamic mover. Explosive athlete. Malik Hooker is a 4.56, uh, 40. Um, so Trayvon's right in there speed wise. And if he was hurt going to 80%, then he, those numbers would come down, obviously, even better, uh, more dynamic, uh, athletic, that type of thing. Um, but I did mention that a lot of the, the plays he made, he's he's a versatile safety. He can play all over the field. And a lot of the stuff he do is a split split zone with our, da- our, our Davius or or Darius Washington, I guess, is the other safety. Very good, but small uh, safety for TCU. And so it wasn't necessarily a lot of single high, but he does have some single high tape. And he's actually very good. has good ball, good ball skills and, and can do those types of things um, that you'd want him to do. So if, if the Raiders decide, you know what? Uh, Jonathan Abram is going to be our strong safety or box safety. Uh, we do not need to go out in the free agent market to get a veteran. Trayvon's our guy at, at the single high free safety. He can handle it. Then this will be the pick at 17. Um, and that will be that. Because uh, I don't think there's another player in the draft that could jump into our defense and, and from the get-go play the single high without um, – some uh, some flaws, you know. I, I I think that anybody we bring in would we would we would want to get that veteran, and that's why this pick to me doesn't make as much sense to do um, because I think there are some very good safeties, some single high safeties um, that can play the position well. It's just going to take a little time to learn it, um, and so I don't know if we want to take a the 17th overall pick to get a guy that's going to have to learn how to play the position and kind of grow into it, maybe for a portion of a season or a full season even it's a, a difficult position to play um but if trayvon's the guy and they think it is um he's the best in the draft and that will be that will be the pick so then you know we move on to the right tackle position and i think this is kind of the consensus of what i hear is the most obvious the safest pick to make is uh tevin jenkins the right tackle out of oklahoma state uh tremendous player um Definitely has all the measurables you could you could want. He's 6'5", 307. Uh, nine and a half inch hands are a little smaller than some of the others, but 33 and a half inch arms, 81 wingspan. Uh, he ran a 5.0140 bench, 36, which is tremendous. 32 and a half vert, um, uh, 20 shuttle is 466. Uh, just to compare a little bit, uh, Tristan Wirfs last year, you know, he was 6'4", 320. The hand size 1025, no big deal. Arm 34, so about right there. Wingspan 80, pretty much what Tevin is. Um, 40, a little faster, 45. But bench only 24, so Tevin's much stronger. Uh, I should note Tevin is uh, 23 years old, so that probably is the difference there. He's not a 20, 21 year old. Uh, vertical, Tristan had 36, but uh, Tristan had a 468. Uh, 20 shuttle, and Tevin had a 466. So he can move side to side. His movement skills are great. He's tremendous power in the run game. Uh, watching his tape, very patient with his hands on pass sets. So, uh, very good player. He, he's a plug and play player. He'll be all right tackle from day one, no problem. And definitely a safe pick. That um, his draft range is anywhere what I've noticed, and it's actually coming down. Is when I looked, it was eighteen to thirty one. Consensus had him around twenty. Um, but I think it's even went down from there. Uh, I, I think I've even seen some walks having him like at uh, 14 or 15 uh, range. So de- definitely not a stretch to pick him at 17. Um, his measurables are right there with all the top tackles from last year. Uh, you look at uh, Mika Becton, 6'6", 304, arms 35, uh, wingspan 83, 
uh, that type of thing. So, I mean, he, he, he only a twenty, only a twenty uh, rep bench. So, uh, Tevin has definitely showed the strength, uh, and it shows on film as well. But he has all the other measurables that you need. This, to me, is his safest pick. He's day one starter, no doubt. Um, and the only, the only thing I have with this making this pick is that the tackle class is deep. Um, so. Uh, we can get a uh, starting tackle in the second round and possibly even the third round. Um, there, there are some tackles in this class that if you look through uh, that could definitely start. And I think that we even have tackles on our roster right now that could do it. You know, we could put good there. Um, I'm not sure Parker is quite ready. He made some strides last year, but I don't think he's quite there yet. And there's also uh, some free agents still available that if we wanted to, you know, be more aggressive in the draft, which hopefully we are, uh, they're getting the safe pick. Um, we can definitely sign somebody uh, to play right tackle, and our offense would be fine. It would hum along. Um, but I think this is probably the safest pick. I think it's the most widely mocked pick, and uh, or at least right tackle. There are some other right tackles that I think will just go before him, Dershaw, uh, Slater, uh, obviously Sewell will go before him. So I think uh, that's kind of where I'm at with Tevin Jenkins. I would not be mad if we got him, but um, I I think we need to concentrate still on our pass rush. We started out, um, I remember the press conference me off talking about, you know, we got to get, or maybe as Gus talking about how we got to get after the quarterback, and that's still true. And so um, Christian Barmore, he is by far the best defensive tackle in the class, the three technique. Um, and just kind of talking about our defensive, our three technique, um, I believe we, we would keep three on our roster. Um, and we've signed a bunch. So we have Solomon Thomas, who we guaranteed 2.7 million to Quentin Jefferson. We guaranteed 2 million to, so that leaves, uh, one more spot. And the other guys, we didn't really make any commitments to. Like Mo Hurst, he's guaranteed very little. Uh, David Irving, only 50K. I think Mo's only like 80K. Uh, Kendall Vickers, no guarantee. Matt Dickerson, like very minimal, 80, 80 grand. Uh, Darius Filion, I'm not sure if I said his name right. All these guys are three techniques. Uh, or zero dollars uh, committed to him as far as a guarantee. So. Um, I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I think um, I don't know if we 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 look to cut one of the other guys that we paid the money to, but I, or we have the fifty five man roster and we keep four, which is I think we probably would keep four because I think David Irving I think is going to make it. Uh, the the one thing that I I did notice that all the ones that we signed as far as uh, Solomon Thomas, Quentin Jefferson. Uh, David Irving, Kendall Vickers, uh, Matt Dickerson, Daenerys Phelan, all of those guys have the ability to play up and down the line of scrimmage. Mo Hurst is a three technique. So personally, I think Mo is on the trading block. I think he might see a draft day trade with Mo. Might see him get cut. Um, I don't think Mo Hurst fits the scheme. And he's kind of saw it last year, even though it was a, a, I guess a different scheme, but he didn't play much. <laughs> and, um, and there's a reason for that. So all of the other guys, some of them have been listed as defensive ends uh, because they can go up and down the line of scrimmage. So I would look for a Solomon Thomas, Quentin Jefferson, make the team, Dave Irving, maybe Kendall Vickers, uh, maybe practice squad of the 55. But I'd also look at bringing in Christian Barmore. Christian Barmore is a dynamic defensive tackle. He can play up and down the line. Um, you know, as far as a one technique, we only have one on our roster, Jonathan Hankins. Uh, we, we probably will carry two, is my guess. Uh, unless we get Barmore, Barmore can play the, the one tack or the nose tackle. It's not his ideal position, but he can do it. He can play anywhere all the way up to the five technique, which is similar to all the other guys except for Mo. Mo is pretty much a three technique, and that's what he does. Um, but Barmore's a dam dynamic player, 6'4", 310, ran a 4'9", 340. Um, well, some concerns I have, he didn't do the other drills, so I'm just wondering why that may be. Obviously, you're going to draft him at 17. Hopefully, you, you can get him to come in and get a personal workout. He is only 21, um, but just showed a tremendous upside. I mean, if you look at Chris Jones, 6'4", 310, uh, he ran a 5'0", 340. 
Uh, let's see, you're Leonard Williams, 6'4", 302. You ran a 497, 40. So, I mean, uh, athletically, he's there. Um, on tape, it's uh, Christian Barmore. I mean, you don't look any further than the two playoff games. They were phenomenal. I mean, he dominated those games. Um, tremendous player. Um, so, and this would be a guy that can get after the quarterback. So, in 2020, he had eight sacks, nine and a half tackles for loss. Um, in 2019, when he was used uh, for pressure situations, he didn't play a lot as much in 2019. But anytime he was in a, in a pass uh, rush situation, he 20% of the time he got a uh, pressure rate, and 23.5% uh, of the time um, he had a win rate. So he knows how to get after the passer. Um, one thing that you look for in a defensive tackle or anybody that's playing the line is hand usage. In violent hand usage, and he has that. He uses his violent hands. He's still developing some of his pass rush moves. Again, he's 21. He'll learn more moves, but explosive first step. Can play anywhere in the line. Um, handles the run or the pass. Um, whatever you need him to do with the line, is, is he can do it. And there's a tremendous drop-off after him for defensive tackle in this draft. So if we don't get him here, I, I, I mean, I don't anticipate his giving one until later in the rounds fourth round or later after that uh, just because of the guys that we have signed uh no nobody's going to be jumping over these guys except for him you know he can definitely jump in as a day one starter and you know i don't think we miss a miss a beat and it'd be a great in the rotation um with solomon and and jefferson and, and irving and whoever else out of the group that we pick but he'd be a tremendous tremendous player for us so um for me, that's kind of one B <laughs> as a draft pick. I mean, um, uh, draft analysis hasn't gone anywhere from, you know, uh, I don't know, around 20 up to 32. I think a lot of people right now have him projected going to Tampa Bay. Um, but uh, he can kind of go anywhere, anywhere up and down the board. Anybody that needs a defensive tackle. Uh, suppose he may slip to the second or the top of the second, but I, I, don't, I don't know that he will. I don't think he gets past Tampa Bay. Uh, out of the first round, so I would definitely look for Christian to to possibly be be a Raider. Um, I think he would definitely fill fill a need, and more importantly, he's the best player at the position and help us get after the quarterback, which is our ultimate which is our ultimate goal. So, and then my one A player uh, to get at seventeen, Aziz Olajari, tremendous player. Um, if you look at uh, some of the things that he's able to to do, uh, tremendous, tremendous player. Um, he would definitely fill the need for us um, as far as uh, Sam Linebacker. He, uh, he's projecting right now anywhere from 12 to 25. Consensus has him at 22, so definitely not a reach. Uh, 2019, 2020, 17 and a half tackles for loss, 15 sacks. Um, he did drop in coverage in 2020 uh, by PFF 77 times. So he's definitely uh, somebody that can drop back uh, in coverage. He's not the greatest head, but he doesn't have to be. So the, the reason I think this is the best 1A pick right now for us is, one, he's tremendous at getting after the quarterback. Uh, in my opinion, he's right up there with Jalen Phillips as the best pass rusher. Um, he's got moves. He's got speed. He's got strength. Uh, he's got everything that you might need. In fact, if you take a look at his measurables, I think um, Daniel Jeremiah put it out there. Uh, in 2020, in the top 13 sacks, sack leaders, the average uh, measurable was uh, 6'4", 260, 33 and three-quarters arms, 4'6", 40, a 1'6", 10 split, 7'14", three-cone drill, and on the bench, 23. Olajari, 6'2", 249, arms, 34 and 3 8 40, 4, 6, 0, 10 split, 1, 6, 1, 3 cones, 7, 2, 7, bench, 28, way above. Not only that, he did a 10, 7 broad jump and an 82 inch wingspan. He has all of the measurables that you'd want out of a dominant sack. I mean, there's the. What, what I just did was the average of the sack leaders for 2020, the 13 top sack leaders. Uh, if you want to, if you're concerned about the weight, the minimum, I think it was Reddick probably 6'1", 237, 32 inch arms, a 4'4", 140, a 1'5", 
one five zero split and a six seven nine three count, but only eighteen reps uh, for the bench. So he he's right there with the minimum and the max six five two seventy four. So. Strength is not a problem for him. He can handle himself the running game. Um, his comp actually is uh, Yannick, so he could play the Leo eventually, which would be great for us to get him in now, have him play the Sam spot, um, and then eventually transition to the Leo spot possibly, or at least back him up at that position. But, yeah, tremendous at that. But not only that, but we don't have a player on our roster right now that can handle the Sam position. The Sam position for us is, it's a little different. So it's uh, I, I've heard a lot. You know, we could piece it together. Of course, we could put somebody out there, Little Tanner. We could put uh, uh, Moro out there just to do the coverage. Bring Crosby in as a designated pass rusher. But ideally, that's not how this defense works. That's not how it properly runs. the The best one or two pass rushers on the team in this defense of the Gus Bradley defense is the Sam linebacker. His re- duties, responsibilities when they were in the undercover. Is to, is to drop in the flats. All you're asking them to do is drop in the flat, watch the running back, watch any any passes in the flat, uh, come up, handle the run. Uh, but primarily your job in the nickel, which is what you're in most of the time anyways, is an edge pass rusher. So um, your three technique or your uh, four technique, which is feral, kick inside or come off the field, whichever. But Olajari stays on the field, so think about that. Uh, Aziz on one edge. Yannick on the other. I mean, that's dynamic. Get that push up the middle. Now we're getting after the pass rusher. Now we're getting after the pass rusher. Sorry, the quarterback. And so this would be a, you know, a tremendous pick for the Raiders to do. We don't, one, we don't have anybody on our roster right now to do the position. Uh, it, if we go into the season the way we are now, we're, we're piecing it together. And this is the part where um, kind of like Jonathan Abram, where we, we switch coordinators. We have to switch personnel, too, because – John Aaron may not be a match for what we need out of our safety position. You know, phys- his physical traits may not be a, a box safety in the sense that we need it to be for the Gus Bradley defense. You know, he, he may not have the ability to play free safety. It's gonna, that's tough. Same thing with Max Crosby. Yeah, he's our best pass rusher over the last two years, but he doesn't really have a spot on this defense. He's not a Leo. He's not a, a wide nine pass rusher. He, he's not going to be able to handle the weak side run. Um, so he, he, right now he would be backing up that position, but the other part would be the Sam linebacker. Um, right now, as we sit, yeah, he'd come in on passing downs, assuming we can get him on the field, um, to come rush the quarterback, but that's not ideally if this D if Gus Bradley's defense runs the way it's supposed to and most effectively, you'll have a, a Sam linebacker. Aziz to be able to drop in coverage in zone coverage. He did. He's dropped 77 times last year in, in coverage. Not all great because some of it was man to man, but we're not asking him to do that. We're asking him to just drop in a simple zone, take the flat, cover the run, which he can definitely do, but more importantly, be up on the line as an edge rusher, attack that outside shoulder of the tackle, do some stunts with uh, Cleveland or whoever's in there as a three technique and get after it. So, that's kind of what we have. That's kind of what I have. Well, I'm looking forward to for the for the Raiders. Five possible uh, first round picks. Again, I hope we do trade back um, and trade back and trade back up. And again, it would be even more ideal. But if not, pick 17, Jeremiah Usa Koromora, possibly, depending on what we or how the Raiders evaluate Jonathan Abram, Trayvon Mooring depending on if the Raiders want to go free safety, if they think a, a first-year guy can can handle the, the single high safety position. Tevin Jenkins, a plug-and-play starting right tackle, if they want to play it safe. Uh, 1B for me, Christian Barmore, get after the passer uh, from the from three technique or zero technique or five technique, however you want to see it, anywhere on the line. This man can get the job done. Or Aziz Olajari as our Sam linebacker. Press the edge and uh, drop in coverage occasionally. And uh, yeah, that's what I got for you. Uh, if you like the video, please hit like. Or if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Add any comments you like, would be great. And uh, next time, I think uh, we will go over the second round choices. Uh, we'll kind of build on this, uh, on these five players. 
you know, obviously uh, who we pick in the first round will kind of dictate who we pick in the second round. So we'll kind of go over some different scenarios there. And uh, hopefully there's some more free agent news that we can uh, take a look at. If not, uh, you guys have a good night. And thanks for tuning in to the Raiders uh, roster report.